So you just got your new Mac, and whether you're using it for photo editing, video editing, user production, all these tasks rely on one common point, mass storage. You have many different options and routes you could go down for high-speed mass storage, many of which have different trade-offs. Most people start off by buying additional hard drives and SSDs, and while you're going to need those, there's a limit to how many you can install in a single tower. Not to mention, new Macs don't even have expandable internal storage. What do you do then? Well, you could go to external drive solutions, but if you're like me and have many different systems with their own mass storage drives, this is where building yourself a fast local network has a lot of benefits. You get the benefits of data redundancy, meaning that if your main system dies, you'll have your files saved on another system that hopefully will still be working with replicated versions of those files. So if you've decided it's a good idea, uh, you're going to want to go fast. Typically, gigabit networking, or 1 gig, is good enough for a lot of people. Honestly, most people don't even know that computers can talk to each other and store files with each other so easily as they actually can. But for serious work, where time is money, or if you're moving massive files, or if you're possibly wanting the option to even edit or run programs based off files coming over your network from mass storage, typical gigabit isn't going to cut it. So that's the problem laid out, but on a Mac, fixing it typically isn't so easy or cheap compared to Windows and Linux counterparts. However, today I'm going to show you how you can use small tree drivers uh, to make cheaply available Intel networking cards work with desktop style Macs or even laptop style Macs assuming you have a PCI Express to Thunderbolt enclosure. You're also going to need to make sure that every link in your local networking from your networking card to your networking switch are compatible and support 10 gig. A single 10 gig networking card does not a 10 gig network make. Those switches can get expensive. I recommend the Buffalo BSMP2008 switch myself, that's what I use, but that's for another video. Today on the channel, I'm going to show you how to get wacky with the hacky with Intel networking cards and Macs. So I was originally going to put this Intel X540-AT2 clone into my Mac Pro. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out of box. Um, however, there is a company called Smalltree that makes a bunch of Ethernet cards based off the Intel 10 gigabit copper NICs. Their drivers, however, don't work on retail Intel cards. This one happens to be an HP equivalent, but it's still detected, as we can see on the monitor here. Uh, X540 AT2. So, in order to get this to work with the Smalltree drivers, you need to get the subsystem ID to be the same as the Smalltree cards. And the way you can do that is with commands in Linux. So I've made a post-it note and I will be posting the guide in order to help you out. It's really long and complicated, but the bottom line is, is my subsystem ID is right here. See how it says 103C colon 0A00? That's actually wrong, I have to fix it. It's supposed to be 000A, see? I put that up on the top there. But anyway, long story short, uh, you can run a certain command to find the, um, this, 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 uh, uh, there it is right there. LSPCI-NN-VVV, uh, line break, space, grep, space, ethernet. That should show you all the controllers. And then from there, you should see that is, uh, uh, the manufacturer code 8086. That's Intel colon 1528. That's this particular card, the X540-AT2. And then the actual subsystem ID is right there. It originally said 103C colon, um, what did I write? Uh, 211A. Uh, and I changed it to um, 000A, or at least I will be, via these offset values. Now, how do you figure out your offset value? Well, let me show you. All right, guys, so this is the command for my card, sudo ethtool-e, that's the name of the interface, uh, colon less, or whatever, line break at less, all right? We run it, and it gives you the hex values. So this is what you call an offset. So this is just telling you what line it's on, essentially, and then these are the values for that line. So you count hexadecimally across uh, for each pair of numbers. So this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And it's that simple. So what you're looking for in here is that subsystem ID from earlier. So in my case, I know that that's on offset line 48. So we scroll down, it'll say 0, 480 for line 48. Uh, 0480, okay. And I my specifics um, ID was stored in E and F. So if I go down, E, 00, zero F, 0A. Zero so these are the values that I needed to set. Um, they've already been set, 
But as you can see, essentially all you're hunting for is your subsystem ID in this table. Once you've found it, and then this is the name of your actual uh, network card, um, you can find this by running another command, if config, right? So if you do a quick if config, that will show you what the actual name of your card is. So here is the final command that I need to run. sudo eth tool dash capital E, the name of my interface magic, the command, the um, first subsystem, first system hardware ID, whatever. The f my card is a an, um, an X540 uh, dash AT2. So the first numbers for it are 1528, and then the next set of numbers are 8086. So that tells magic what card you're targeting. Offset. So we figured out that our offset value is 0x48e and 48f. The, the lines we have to change to 0, 0 for E and 0A for F from their originals of 21 and 1A by checking it in the table available from sudo etool dash lowercase e name of your interface line break less. So for the next line, uh, we have to set uh, value line uh, 48F to a value of 0x, 0a. And if I hit enter, there we go. So that should set uh, interface one uh, sub system vendor ID to 000a, which is what we wanna do. And we have to repeat these commands for the other interface because it's a dual NIC card. So F0 is the first one, F1 is the second one. So we'll bring up this command again. And all we have to do is change it from F0 to F1. And that'll do it for F1 for that first, uh, for the second offset. And then we're gonna have to go two commands back. So now I'm adjusting the E row again to 0, 0. And I need to set that to F1. So go over here, change it back to F1. And if you're not familiar with Linux, um, I'm just hitting up and down on my keyboard to scroll between previously used commands and that can save you a lot of typing time. And that should do it. This card should now be ready to go into the Mac. All right, guys, I know that was complicated and fast, but between what I've just shown you and the guide that I'm posting in the description, again, links below, you should be able to figure out how to make this work no problem. Uh, the only other caveats are that you have to download and install those small tree drivers, um, 10 gig for 10 gig cards, one gig for one gig cards, but this should work with any Intel branded card um, that small tree has previously used the Intel chipsets for in their cards. Um, that's how this works. So yeah, just check it out. You'll have to go make an account on their site, but it's really easy to do. It just takes an email and a password like any other site that you might sign up for. And that's pretty much it for you today. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, the advantages to doing this, uh, pretty simple. Um, a lot of those Intel cards can be obtained really cheaply off eBay, giving you 10 gig networking at a fraction of the cost for your Mac. So yeah, thanks. And I hope this helped you out. Have yourself a good day.